On today's video, I'm going to break down the top 10 facts about one of my favourite breeds on the planet, the Connie Corso. Welcome back to The Canine Show. If you are new here, my name's Will. I'm a canine behaviorist, and on this channel, I make videos just like this one to better educate people about these amazing dog breeds that we all love so much. So if you are new here, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell so you never miss a future upload. But without further ado, let's dive straight into the list, and we'll start off with number 10. And at number 10, I have the intelligence of the Connie Corso. For me, by far the smartest of all of the Mastiff-type breeds, the intelligence of the Connie Corso is absolutely fantastic through the roof. Now I'm going to talk about trainability a little bit later on but I really want to focus on this point about their intelligence levels and the pros and the cons about those intelligence. That intelligence like I say in my opinion is higher than all of the other Mastiff type breeds and is up there with breeds I would say like the Rottweiler and the Connie Corso simply does not get the respect that they deserve in terms of their intelligence. And for me the reason for that is the fact that a lot of people consider the Connie Corso as a stubborn breed. Now I don't actually necessarily think that that's quite true. I think what's happening with the Connie Corso is that their intelligence not allow only allows them to learn good habits very quickly but it also allows them to learn bad habits very quickly and things that they can get away with and things that they can push the boundaries on just because of how switched on they are. So if you are considering a Connie Corso they are extremely intelligent but you need to be a calm consistent leader from day one and make sure that your boundaries are firmly in place throughout their intelligence entire lives. My fact at number nine is just how quiet this breed is. Now Mastiffs genuinely do tend to be quieter than most of the other guard dogs and if you put the breed like a German Shepherd up on the high end of the barking list, a Connie Corso is right down the bottom end with breeds like the Bull Mastiff. Known for having amazing guarding skills that doesn't necessarily mean that they're naturally very vocal. The Connie Corso is quite content and happy just to sit and observe and be there should be there for you should that be required. So if you're looking for a guardian breed but you don't want that one that excessively barks anytime anything goes on in its surroundings, Connie Corso could be a great choice. My fact at number eight is about the health and life expectancy of the Connie Corso. Now if you've been following this channel or my second channel Will and Mabel for any amount of time you will know that this is a very kind of raw, fresh and sore subject for me. Now before I had a Connie Corso puppy I used to have a Bull Mastiff and my Bull Mastiff passed away at just four years old and unfortunately my Connie Corso puppy a few weeks ago passed away at just four months old from a hereditary heart issue called PDA. Now the average life expectancy of a Connie Corso is more like 10 to 12 years but unfortunately like all Mastiff breeds like the Bull Mastiff and the situations I faced with my Bull Mastiff they are prone to a lot of health issues. Again that is very common with giant breeds and unfortunately more so with Mastiff type breeds. You're going to suffer from not only things like hip and elbow dysplasia, bloat and gastric torsion that are very common just with large powerful breeds but also like I found out they do suffer from lots of different hereditary heart issues as well as being very prone to lots of different cancers. So if you get an Econi Corso make sure you get good health insurance, do your research, try and find the best breeder possible that does all those health checks. Now like in my situation sometimes these things just happen um, and it is a risk that you take and it's a risk that I think it is important for people to be aware of when you're coming into this kind of breed. My fact at number seven is about the Connie Corso's desire to work. Now, like I mentioned when I was talking about their intelligence, I wanted to discuss the desire to work in its own fact because it is just so brilliant. Now, the Connie Corso, again, in my opinion, is not only the most intelligent breed, but also has the highest desire to work breed of all of the different Mastiffs and is one of the reasons that I chose them over all of the other Mastiffs when I love each one of those just as much, if not more, in certain different areas. But that ability to work and that desire to work combined with the intelligence makes them very eager to please. Now you mix all of those things and you've got a trifecta for a dog that is brilliant and can achieve high levels of obedience from just a companion animal all the way through to various different working roles and it's that reason, it's that combination of eagerness to please, 
desire to work and intelligence that is making the Connie Corso one of the most popular personal protection dogs in the world. And I guarantee as the next few years go on, they're gonna be right up there. You're gonna start seeing them in military roles and they're gonna be up there with the German Shepherd, Doberman and Rottweiler as super common, very well-known guardian dogs. My fact at number six is that even though they're such a large, powerful breed, they don't actually necessarily require lots of space. Now, lots of people out there, when they're giving advice about the Connie Corso, just simply due to their size, often recommend that you need a huge house and a huge garden. Now, for me, I actually disagree with that fact with one big caveat. The Connie Corso, Again, one of the reasons that I love the breed so much over a breed like the English Mastiff or a Bull Mastiff is because they're not only so eager to work, but they're much more athletic than some of the other Mastiff type breeds. So for me personally, that was brilliant because I like to do lots of hiking and getting out in the great outdoors and dogs that can come with me on that is an absolute joy for myself. Now, the flip side to that argument is not only does the dog need lots of mental stimulation because of that desire to work and intelligence, but more so than a Bull Mastiff or an English Mastiff, they do need more physical exercise however if you can drain that physical and mental exercise from the dog and if you can get that done early in the day first thing the Connie Corso will actually settle down brilliantly in the home and they don't need much space at all as long as they've got a nice bed or you don't mind them getting up on the sofa and they've got good household manners and obedience in general a Connie Corso will very happily be very content just to curl up and chill out in a smaller amount of space than required same for a garden a Connie Corso also isn't a breed like a German Shepherd that even after a good hour long walk in the morning would love to be paroling around huge gardens. They'd much rather go out, do a bit of work, do a bit of exercise, burn off some mental steam, then come back in, chill out and relax. So if like me, you're looking for that combination of a dog that can come out with you, yet can come back to your home and not need much space and just chill, Another reason that Connie Corsos are so amazing. Now, before we dive into my top five facts about the Connie Corso, I want to remind you guys that we have relaunched Fenrir Canine products. The link is down in the description box below. And as I just mentioned, my Connie Corso puppy did pass away. When she passed away, we had so many amazing messages from you guys that we're giving all of you 10% off everything when you use the promo code Mabel. Our Fenrir Canine products is the business that I have uh, launched. All the products have been fought by me, prototyped, tested, designed, and now produced by myself to offer you guys the best products possible for these large garden breeds that we love so much. So if you are interested, like I say, links in the description, go and check it out. And if you were interested in purchasing, drop Mabel in as a promo code and you'll get 10% off. But back to our top 10 facts about the Connie Corso and jumping in at number five, it's about cropping and docking. And we're gonna focus more on the cropped ears. Docking a dog's tail is very common practice and it's something that a lot of people are aware of but it surprised me when I started becoming much more involved in this breed more from just an owner and companion point of view as opposed to the amount of Corsos I work with from a behaviorist point of view that a lot of people's wider perception is that those ears come cropped and that's how they've been genetically changed and that the dogs are born like that that's not actually the case Connie Corsos are born with very typical folding Mastiffs type ears that are extremely silky however it is very common practice around the world to crop the Connie Corso's ears. That was originally done when they were working as guardians. It removed weak spots so that predators or other animals that the dog was protecting their owners and the property from couldn't use those as weak spots and rip them off, which then might cause infections and it was just safer for the dog. That practice kind of does continue on, especially in countries like Italy and America. It is very common to see Connie Corso's with cropped ears. Here in the UK, that practice is completely banned, which is why you won't see a Connie Corso in England with cropped ears unless they were imported from a country and had the practice done in a country where it was legal and then imported over here. So that's a bit of a fun fact about the Connie Corso. We're not going to discuss kind of the morality and ethics of cropping and docking. I did that in another video. So if you are interested, go back and you'll look at my opinions on cropping and docking. But that is why you see so many dogs, Connie Corsos with cropped ears, and why mine didn't have cropped ears and why so many in this country don't. At number four, we have a personal favorite fact for me about the Connie Corso, and that is just how easy they are to groom. Now, they not only have a really short, flat lying, lovely smooth coat, but it's a coat that doesn't shed anywhere near as much as many other breeds. Take my Labrador, for example, has a similar flat lying, lovely silky coat, but that fur gets 
everywhere and you have to groom him daily and even daily with a good brush as soon as he sits down or brushes past you you're getting a nice little film of uh, Labrador hair. Connie Corsos don't have that so once weekly brush over and kind of a wipe down with a cloth and then just remove any mud or other stuff that they might find themselves depending on where you walk them and groom in with the Connie Corsos is an absolute piece of cake. Like all brassiophallic and kind of wrinkly mastiffy type dogs just make sure you keep those wrinkles clean because if they have especially wrinkly faces it's a breeding ground for bacteria so you don't want any infections or anything developing in those wrinkles but other than that really easy groom to breed Coming in at number three, my fact is about those exercise requirements and balance. Now, I know we touched on it a little bit, but again, I thought it was really important to put this in with its own fact, because not only is it a fascinating part of the Connie Corso's general temperament and characteristics, but it's something that you should really take very seriously. Far too many people choose their dog simply based on looks, and let's face it, Connie Corso's, if you're watching this video and you follow this channel and you like large working breeds, you probably agree with me that they are one of the best looking dogs on the planet but you shouldn't choose your dog solely based on looks you should choose it on their temperament their characteristics and very importantly their energy and exercise requirements because if you get a dog that has higher energy and higher exercise requirements in your lifestyle or that you're prepared to give them that is one of the fastest ways for problem behaviors to sink in which then cause the dogs ending up in shelters which then causes them being euthanized and again as long-time viewers will know everything I do on my channels and working with people and helping dogs is all about limiting the amount of dogs that end up in shelters and therefore euthanized so the energy and the exercise requirements of the Connie Corso like I touched on are a fantastic balance it's very common that if you have a higher energy dog that is capable of coming out with you and doing hiking and some mountain biking and likes going out for long walks that when they get back that high energy kind of continues so for people that don't want that kind of high energy within the household that might not be a good choice of breed for them Whereas the Connie also has that beautiful ability of being able to come out, burning off that energy, and as long as they burn off that energy, when they come back into the home environment, they can be the most loving, gentle, docile, relaxed, calm dogs on the planet. So for if you're in a similar boat to me, where you like to get out in the morning, stretch your legs, get some fresh air, take your dog for a nice walk, but when you get home, you want to be able to chill on the sofa and cuddle up with your family and have a dog that's relaxed and isn't constantly pestering you and wanting to play, a Connie Corso might be a perfect fit. My fact at the number two spot is about those protection instincts. Now there's no way we could do top 10 facts about the Connie Corso and not talk about how incredible they are as family guardians. Now don't get me wrong, they're decent property guardians but there is better choices out there if you're wanting to protect large bits of land or wider boundaries and perimeters of your property. I'm doing a top 10 video on that so you'll see that coming up very soon. However, However, if you want a dog that is there and designed to protect you and protect your family, for me, they are right up there as potentially the best guardian breed on the planet. They're there for a couple of reasons. Not only do they have deeply ingrained, extremely protective natural instincts, like many of the Mastiffs do, but they also have a sheer devotion and love for their family that is unlike many other breeds on the entire planet. You combine that sheer love and devotion for its people with those natural instincts and the fact that it will do anything to protect them and you have one of the most fearless guardians on the planet. Now again, you also combine that skill set with the fact that they're not overly aggressive, they're not overly outward and they will only act under actual very um, extreme circumstances where protection is actually required and you also have a reliable guardian, which for example, you've got kids and you have kids have the friends over and the friends start roughhousing and playing like kids do you want a dog that is able to read that situation now you should never leave any kind of dog let alone a guardian breed in that kind of situation unsupervised but the Connie Corso for me just has a better ability at reading those situations and only acting when absolutely required providing that you're a calm consistent leader that has raised them to be a perfect canine companion again if you need help with that I'll leave links to my online dog training courses down in the description box below so you can go check that out if you again if you're interested
taking my number one fat position, and this is something, again, as I delve deeper into the world of Connie Corso ownership, is something that I personally found absolutely fascinating, and I thought you guys might as well, and that is the size of the Connie Corso. Now, the Connie Corso is a Mastiff breed, so obviously they're very large dogs. Now, they're not up there with the English Mastiff, who is widely considered the, the biggest, heaviest of all the Mastiffs, but what is really, truly fascinating is how much those sizes can vary, and how much they can vary from country to country. The most clear example of this is if you take a look at the average size of the American Connie Corsos versus the average size of the English or European Connie Corsos and you'll see a massive difference. Now the reasons for this often get blurred and are debated quite heavily and that you'll find that a lot of people, especially kind of this side of the pond, will argue that the Italian smaller Connie Corsos, where the males will grow upwards of around 100 to 110 pounds, are the more traditional as they should be Connie Corsos. But over in America, it's not rare for a male Connie Corso to be 120 to 140 pounds. Now, the reason for that is often discussed that when they first went over to America and before they were registered with the kennel club that kind of helps to keep the... Uh, um, the sizes and the physical characteristics as they should be. A lot of Great Dane was put into those uh, American Connie Corsos, which buffed up the size, increased their height and their weight, and is why the American Connie Corsos tend to be so much bigger than the English or European counterparts. So I hope you found that interesting. If you did, hit that thumbs up button, subscribe and notification bell if you're new here so you never miss another episode of The Canine Show.